Are you tired of just simply manifesting little things? Would you like to develop the ability to manifest bigger and more impressive results? If so, then what I'm sharing with you in this video will be highly valuable for you because I'm going to describe a system of manifesting that goes beyond what you're normally taught. Most people, and that includes myself, who teach manifesting, focus on the final process. The process of setting an intention in such a way that you can reasonably expect positive results. I have described in some previous videos, and I'll link to one of them here, that the simplest form of manifesting can actually be just simply making a decision about what you want to manifest and trusting that it will happen. Now, this process is actually a little too simple for most folks, simply because we have so many different memories, so much experience of making decisions that didn't manifest. So how can we believe that the decisions that we make now will actually manifest? Well, that gets into what I'm going to share in this video, because I'm going to be talking about a form of manifesting that I call two-phase manifesting. And the reason I call it two-phase manifesting is because there are two different phases, two different things that we do to improve our manifesting results. You see, the final actual manifesting process is just the second phase of this. This is the place, this is the time when we focus our minds on what we want to create, anchor that into our consciousness with a feeling of faith that it will actually happen, and then release it to do its work. But in order for that to work for you, you need to set up certain conditions first. And setting up these conditions is the first phase of this two-phase process. Now, most of the time, I talk about setting up the conditions as part of a training process to develop the skills necessary to manifest what you want. But that's only one way of looking at this first phase. You can also look at this first phase of manifesting as just simply recharging your batteries. It's like the, the effort to manifest our goals takes a certain amount of energy. And in order to expend that energy, you have to have that energy to begin with. And so you could look at this first phase as just recharging your batteries. You can also look at this first phase as sharpening your tools, putting a fine edge on your belief system that gives you the power to manifest what you want. I mean, one of the most important beliefs that you have to have is that you have the power to manifest your desires. That's one of the beliefs that we need. There's quite a few other beliefs. You need to believe that manifesting is possible. You have to believe that your mental efforts have a direct chain of cause and effect to produce the results you want. You have to believe that you have the power to manifest. You have to believe that you have the skill to manifest. And there are a few other beliefs involved as well beyond that that we will get into later. Okay, so there's a certain number of beliefs that you need in order to manifest your goals. This first phase can be looked at as fine-tuning your beliefs so that your efforts in the second phase of manifesting are more effective. You can also look at this first phase of manifesting as getting your conscious and subconscious minds in alignment with each other so that they work together rather than working at odds with each other. So there's a lot of different ways of looking at this first phase of manifesting to prepare yourself for the second phase. Uh, there are a number of psychic healers, energy healers, who will spend a number of hours in meditation preparing themselves to do a healing session. There are psychics who will spend time in meditation 
to clear their mind and prepare themselves to do a psychic reading. Manifestors, sometimes we do the same thing. We spend time in a specific type of meditation that gives us that energy, gives us that confidence, gives us the, the conditions needed, let's just put it that way, gives us the conditions that are needed to make our manifesting efforts that much more effective. When you approach manifesting as a two-phase process, you can accomplish far bigger goals than you could by just simply going through your day and say, oh yeah, I want to manifest that. Okay, let me focus on that, make it happen. Which you can easily do too, especially if you regularly engage in that first phase that I'm going to be talking about next. <laughs> now we finally get to what is this first phase? What is this guy talking about? <laughs> I understand, I understand. I just needed to kind of put things into context first. Okay, so what is the first phase of manifesting? Well, the first phase of manifesting is, first of all, preparing your mental conditions, preparing your focus, letting go of all the distracting thoughts that could interfere with your ability to manifest. You want to be able to clear your mind. That's why meditation is a good thing. But it goes beyond just simple meditation. It's also the ability to focus your mind on a single thing and put all of your attention on this one thing so that it fills your entire consciousness. That is a exercise that I recommend that you do often because the more you do it, the better you get at it, just like anything else in life. The more you do it, the better you get. Focus your mind on one thing, clear your mind of all distracting thoughts, and the more you can do this, the better you'll be at a manifester. But there's also that element of belief that we also want to address and that is I am a manifester I continually manifest things into my life whether I'm conscious of it or not these are some of the beliefs that you want to reinforce I can choose to manifest what I want into my life you want to reinforce that belief I am a master manifester that's also a really good belief to have because when you truly believe that you are a master at manifesting, your results go through the roof <laughs> because that belief really does give you the power. You also want to believe that you are in some way connected to the world around you and that whatever happens inside your mind has a direct causal link to the world around you so that you can influence it, so that you can control your world and the things and people in it. So these are some of the different beliefs that you might want to reflect on, to reinforce, to affirm within yourself in this first phase. You might also want to consider the working model that you choose to work with, whether it's law of attraction, attracting things in, having that power to attract the things that you want and repel the things you don't want. You can reflect on the law of reflection, that what you create inside your mind is reflected in the world around you. That's a different working model. I talked about seven different working models in another previous video that I'll link to up there. You can Consider and strengthen your belief and your concept in any other working model that you choose to, whether it's that spiritual body extension idea that I talked about where you can reach out into the world and manipulate things directly, or if you have a preference for praying to a divine being, you can reconnect with that divine being in this first phase in this meditation and again it's part of reinforcing the beliefs involved in manifesting but it also goes a little bit beyond that because if your beliefs are that certain things need to be in alignment or that a certain connection needs to be strengthened or a channel needs to be open so that more power can flow through that channel you want to focus your mind on the different elements of manifesting envision them, imagine them, experience them in various ways 
so that you have a firm grasp of that non-physical reality in such a way that you truly believe that you will get the results you want. So this first phase can be a lot of different things. And what my intention was with this video is to describe one particular example of how I use this two-phase manifesting process. And again, I'm going back to a story I've told before, a link to that video as well up here. Uh, the video talks about a lot of different stories, but the story that I'm talking about here is when I was at that die cutting shop. As a temporary laborer with absolutely no authority within the business itself, at the beginning of each week, I was able to look at my blank timesheet, visualize and imagine the number of hours that I wanted to work for that week, and I set that vision aside, and it was uncanny how many weeks in a row I was able to get within a half an hour of whatever number I had imagined and intended to get for that week. So in that example, the actual final manifesting process itself was just simply decide what I want, imagine it, and trust that it would happen. That was the entire process at that stage. What I didn't mention before, and this is really the first time I'm actually telling this part of the story, so you're the first ones to hear this, is that the reason that worked was because also during that time period, during the month leading up to that and during at least a couple of months into that process, I was also doing the first phase that I'm talking about now. I was meditating for at least 15 to 20 minutes a day. Usually it was between a half an hour to an hour though. The 15 to 20 minutes, again, that was minimum. I was often meditating for up to an hour a day, focusing on what was called the central pillar exercise. Now the specific exercise really doesn't matter, but the point that I want to address here, the thing that I got out of that exercise that I did was the ability to focus on a single thing because the, the exercise itself is where you sit, you relax, and you imagine each of the seven major chakras in turn starting with the root chakra at the base of your spine, moving up to the crown chakra at the top of your head. And you imagine each one in turn as a particular color, as an energy, and that energy moving in a particular way. And then imagine it growing stronger and more powerful. And so the exercise itself is a symbolic communication between conscious mind and subconscious mind with a particular intention behind it, which the intention is to, I want to increase my ability to manifest what I want. That was the intention behind the exercise. It was also an exercise in focus, as I just mentioned, to be able to imagine what certain things, certain details, colors, energy, motion, and the feelings that went with this sense of energy and power with each of the different chakras. It's like we go from red to orange to yellow to green to blue to violet and then a white goldish color at the end. So we have the seven, seven major chakras that I was focusing on in turn for a period of time and that really did take a lot of conscious effort. When I was done with those exercises, I was exhausted. <laughs> but it trained me to really focus my mind. And that truly was one of the major things that I needed to, at that time to break through the kind of weak, hazy results that I was getting before into those sharp, definite results that I got at that time in that example. Again, being able to set an intention at the beginning of each week, this is how many hours I want. I want 42 hours this week, or I want 46 hours that week or I want 41 hours this week, or 48 hours this week, or 45 hours. You know, I never really wanted anything less than 40, <laughs> but it was always a certain amount of overtime. How much overtime do I want this week? Until, again, I'll just brief, briefly mention that after a period of time, one of the guys at, at the job convinced me or suggested to me, I should say, the idea of going for maximum overtime. And 
I decided that was a good idea. I set the intention, maximum overtime. We're going to see what this is going to do. And then that ended up being 60 to 70 hours a week for a couple of months until I had had enough. And I said, OK, I'm putting a stop to this. We're going back to normal. Okay. <laughs> and within a week or two after that, it went back to normal. But that's the power that we have in our lives, that even in a situation where we have absolutely no authority, no direct physical control over it, we can take control over those elements of our lives simply by having the faith within ourselves and the ability to focus our minds clearly on what we want to manifest in a way that allows us to feel confident, to truly expect that this is going to work. So what I want to leave you with here is that manifesting doesn't have to be just a one-shot thing and a one-shot thing and a one-shot thing and, and just do one-shots over a period of time. And you definitely don't want to be doing random things and, well, maybe this will work, maybe that will work, maybe this will work. And that's where I started. And yeah, sometimes you have to do that just to kind of test out different ideas. But I also, another previous video, I gave you a tool that you can use to test out different manifesting techniques without wasting a lot of time on that. Uh, so, yeah, you do have to test different things out, but the more you can be focused, and I'm going to use this manifesting technique over and over and over again, especially for the same goal, if it is something that is a little bit beyond what you have done before. You can do that, but it will become much more powerful if you add this first phase to kind of preload that manifesting machine. If you can preload that manifesting machine so that when you do get into a situation where you want to manifest something quickly, you can just push the button and have it work. But in order to get to that point, we do need to go through that prep stage where you are clearing your focus, sharpening your mind, strengthening your belief system, and developing those skills that make manifesting work. So just to kind of end this on a direct plan of action, um, one of the reasons why I have written as many courses as I have through the last 20 years is because there are specific plans of action that you can take one step after another, after another, after another, very easy steps that can take you from a complete novice in manifesting, never having manifested anything in your life, to being a true master at the manifesting process. And so I have a number of different courses. Again, they're all contained within a single members area. I gave up on the idea of selling individual courses and having people pick and choose what do they want, especially when all of these courses basically have the same objective, master the art and science of manifesting. So I packaged it all together about a year ago into a members area, one single price, you get access to everything. And that's not just the courses that tell you what to do, but also hypnosis session, guided meditations, and a library of what I call the not-so-subliminal recordings, because it actually works better when you, the statements within the recordings actually vibrate the air and can tickle your ear. <laughs> so one single price gets access to everything. The normal price is $50 a month, or you can sign up for an entire year for just under 300 So just wanted to make sure that that was available to you, that you know that that is available to you, so that if you want to take this prep stage further and you're not exactly sure what you need to do, there are clear instructions and tools to help you do that to your maximum ability. So. I will be continuing to create new videos to teach different aspects of manifesting. And until then, be blessed, my friend. <laughs>